real footage of victims' brothers attacking murders in court. Three shocking courtroom moments, three families torn by grief and rage. Will they find justice, or will they take the law into their own hands? Jalen Brapson. Tensions mount as the victim's brother, Trevon Singleton, struggles to contain his anger towards the man responsible for his brother's death. But when the judge calls for a victim impact statement, Trevon's emotions explode in a shocking act of violence that will change the course of the trial forever. The Cuyahoga County Common Pleas courtroom was filled with an eerie silence as the proceedings for the trial of Jalen Brabson, the man accused of killing Jamar Singleton, began. The defendant sat at the table next to his lawyer, his face expressionless, as the prosecutor, Jeff Snodder, presented the evidence against him. The victim's family, including his brother, Trevon Singleton, sat in the audience, their eyes fixed on Brabson as they were trying to read his mind. As the trial progressed, the evidence against Brabson became clear. The prosecutors had evidence that Brabson and two other men, Keontae Parker and Darius Eberhardt, had planned to rob J. Mar Singleton and his friends on July 19, 2021. The robbery went wrong, and in the process, J. Mar Singleton was shot and killed. The three men were all charged with aggravated murder, but pleaded guilty to involuntary manslaughter. The trial was emotionally charged for the victim's family, and Trevon Singleton in particular was struggling to keep his emotions in check. As the trial came to a close, the judge, Andrew Santoli, called for a victim impact statement from the family. Trevon Singleton slowly walked to the front of the courtroom, his eyes locked on Brabson. He was trembling with anger and sadness as he began to speak. Brabson, who had been avoiding Trevon's gaze, looked down, avoiding eye contact. As Trevon finished his statement and started to walk back to his seat, his emotions finally got the best of him. In a split-second decision, he lunged at Brabson, tackling him to the ground. The courtroom erupted in chaos as sheriff's deputies rushed to intervene, pulling Trevon off of Brabson and restraining him. Trevon Singleton reached for Brabson's neck as he jumped on top of him and began trying to strangle Brabson, the report said. The incident was caught on one of the deputies' body cams. The footage showed Trevon lunging at Brabson and tackling him to the ground. It also showed the deputies wrestling Trevon to the ground and handcuffing him. The camera also captured the sound of Trevon's anger and frustration screams as he was restrained. The police officers could be heard saying to Trevon, Take it easy. Take it easy, please. Are you relax now? Right, I'm good. I'm good. All right, give him your hand. All right. Just give him your hand. I ain't even moving. Okay. No, we're going to move. All right. My hand in the way. You can't put it in. Fingers. Give me your fingers. All right. All right, they're going to get you up now. Pick your knees up. Up to your chest. As a result of his outburst, Trevon was charged with contempt of court and sentenced to 15 days in jail. The judge, Anderson Tolley, stopped Brabson's sentencing hearing and instead held a contempt of court hearing for Trevon Singleton. Santoli found Singleton in contempt and sentenced him to 15 days in jail. You put everyone in this courtroom at risk. Everyone. I apologize for my actions. Uh, I feel like I had an anxiety and panic attack. This conduct cannot be tolerated. I can't even explain it, but I apologize for my actions. Brabson, who was not injured in the attack, declined medical treatment after the incident. The next day, the sentencing for Brabson resumed, and he was sentenced to at least 25 years in prison. Prosecutors believe Brabson fired the shots that killed J. Mar Singleton. Javon's actions, while understandable, were a stark reminder that in the face of such intense emotions, it is crucial to control oneself and let the justice system take its course. Tristan Lamaru. On Tuesday, February 4th, 2011, Tristan Lamaru was sentenced to 15 years in prison for shooting and killing his wife, Misty Lamaru, several times in the head on August 23rd, 2009. Misty Lamaru's body was found on the bathroom floor of the couple's apartment next to a lit cigarette and with a lighter in her hand. She had been shot five times in the head with a handgun. 
During the sentencing hearing, the courtroom was filled with an air of tension as Misty's brother, Jason Wilson, took the stand to deliver his testimony about the impact that the murder had had on his family. As he began speaking, the emotions of the situation became more and more palpable, and the video footage captured the moment when Wilson started to slowly make his way towards the defendant, Lemaru. The court bailiffs, sensing that Wilson was becoming increasingly emotional, cautiously stepped towards him, ready to intervene if necessary to maintain order in the courtroom. Wilson's voice wavered as he spoke about the loss of his sister and the pain and heartache that her death had caused for himself and his family. He spoke about the memories he cherished of her and the void that her absence had left in their lives. Tears streamed down his face as he spoke of the injustice of her death and the profound sense of loss that he felt every day. The courtroom was suddenly thrown into chaos as Jason Wilson, the grieving brother of Misty, rose from the stand and made a beeline towards the defendant, Lemaru. In a fit of rage and emotion, Wilson attempted to physically confront the person responsible for his sister's death. With lightning quick reflexes, a deputy in the courtroom sprang into action and tackled Wilson to the ground before he could reach Lemaru. The swift action of the deputy prevented a potentially dangerous situation from escalating, and the court bailiffs quickly rushed over to assist in handcuffing Wilson and removing him from the courtroom. The judge, meanwhile, had to temporarily adjourn proceedings as he assessed the situation and determined how to proceed. Despite the outburst, the judge ultimately imposed his sentence on Lamaru, finding him guilty of murder of Misty and sentencing him to the maximum sentence allowed by law. While the episode with Wilson was a dramatic and unexpected turn of events, it only served to underscore the depth of emotion and the immense pain that this murder had caused for the victim's loved ones. Wilson apologizes to the court before being escorted out of the hearing. He is cited for misdemeanor disorderly conduct. Prosecutors cite him because order needs to be maintained in the courtroom for everyone's safety. The release of the video footage of the courtroom attack has caused a firestorm of controversy and sparked a nationwide debate about the rights of victims and their families in the justice system. In the footage, Jason Wilson can be seen lunging towards the defendant, Lamaru, in a moment of raw emotion and anger. Some have pointed to Wilson's action as an understandable response to the pain and loss he has suffered as a result of his sister's murder. They argue that the legal system should take into account the emotional toll that these types of crimes can have on families and should provide them with a means of seeking justice. On the other hand, there are those who believe that Wilson's actions were dangerous and could have put others in the courtroom at risk. They argue that the legal system must maintain order and decorum in the courtroom and that actions like Wilson's only serve to undermine this principle. Jeffrey Clark on November 2nd, Clark appeared in Macomb County courtroom for a preliminary hearing. Macomb County prosecutor Pete Lucido stated that he felt Robertson was executed. The prosecution prepared to introduce more evidence as the courtroom sat silently. But before they could continue, the hearing turned into chaos. In a burst of emotion, a man jumped over courtroom barriers and attacked a handcuffed Clark. The man was later identified to be the twin brother of the victim. He hit Clark multiple times in the back of his head and back. Clark tried to fight back, but was unable because of the restraints. Attorneys and deputies in the courtroom separated the two men, but emotions ran high as multiple screaming matches broke out. Clark was ushered out of the courtroom and his father began to scream at the victim's brother as the two men were being separated. The suspect's father later apologized for his outburst, continuously stating he assaulted my son. The recent incidences of violence in the courtroom have once again raised the age-old question of whether such acts are driven by revenge or a quest for justice. These dramatic events have placed the issue of victims' rights at the center of the national conversation and sparked an important discussion about the role of victims and their families in the criminal justice system.
These incidences raise crucial questions about how society can better support and empower victims and their families as they navigate the often complex and emotionally charged criminal justice process.